Well hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel and glad you could join me. The subject today is uh, VSWR meters, so the rights and the wrongs. Things that can go wrong, things that you might get wrong, things that you might misinterpret. So let's have a look at the rights and wrongs of VSWR meters. A VSWR meter tells us two things. It tells us what the VSWR is, the reflected power, and it tells us what the power output is of the transceiver. Now, most transceivers these days have got a VSWR meter built in. So you might ask, well, what's the point of having an external one? Well, one of the reasons I have an external one is it's very nice to see a, a large meter display indicating that you've got power going out and your antenna system is OK. It's a bit of a psychological thing, it's a bit of a comfort factor really, a nice big VSW monitor shows you that everything is OK, you've got your power going out and uh, you haven't got to look at the small meter on the transceiver. But there are other reasons for having an external VSWR meter and there are some things that you really need to consider when you have an external VSWR meter, how to use it correctly, where to install it and so forth. Let's first consider the internal VSWR meter of your transceiver. I'll show it on the paper here. You've got the internal VSWR uh, meter on your transceiver and then like most transceivers these days, there's an internal antenna tuner. And that antenna, antenna tuner is placed after the internal VSWR meter. And the output of that internal ATU feeds the SO239 socket on the back of your transceiver. And we know that provided you're using a reasonable antenna and you press the internal antenna tuner, you'll get a very good VSWR shown on the transceiver. VSWR meter, but you must understand that that low VSWR is only between the antenna tuner in your transceiver and your internal VSWR meter. The actual VSWR on the coax line hasn't changed at all, and that's the first reason why we want or we might consider buying an external VSWR meter. Could the external VSWR meter always tells you what is happening on the antenna feed line itself. Despite the fact that you've got the comfort factor of uh, having uh, an almost perfect match as far as the transceiver is concerned, the actual perfect match is not on your antenna feeder. Your antenna feeder may have a 1.7, 1.8 VSWR on it. Your transceiver says it's one to one. Great. But that's not the real world. The real world is that you've still got a 1.7 to one VSWR on the outer feed line to the antenna. It's just that the transceiver has provided a good match for its own personal use. So the purpose of having, or one of the purposes of having an external VSWR meter <coughs> is that you can actually read what the VSWR is on the feed line going to the antenna. But unfortunately, VSWR meters don't always tell the truth. They are very, very prone to errors. And those errors almost always are caused by the common mode currents flowing down the outer sheathing of the coax cable. They upset the VSWR meter and it really depends on where the VSWR meter is placed in terms of wavelengths along the line. But be assured that most VSWR meters are affected by the common mode currents on the outside of the coax. So the first thing you need to do when you install an external VSWR meter is to insert a line isolator immediately after the VSWR meter. In other words, on the antenna side of the VSWR meter, you install a line isolator. That removes the common mode currents that would otherwise flow through the VSWR meter, and then all of a sudden the VSWR meter reads what is actually happening. And I mention this in particular because 
One or two uh, viewers have said to me, why is my VSWR meter reading different to the internal one on my transceiver, even when I've turned the an internal antenna tuner off? Well, the answer is that almost always it's be caused by common mode currents. Now, a lot of the VSWR meters have two positions. They have the normal position and they, have, they may have something called PP or average. What does that mean? Well, basically, the normal VSWR meter has got a needle that moves backwards and forwards fairly rapidly, but it can't possibly follow your transmissions because uh, as, you, as, as you speak, you've got highs and lows in the, in the, voice, um, the, the, the voice modulation of the uh, transceiver, and uh, you've got uh, a meter that's trying to follow it, and it just can't follow it. If you switch to um, average mode, then what actually happens is the meter is, is loaded with a capacitor and it, it actually slows the movement down. It reads a sort of an average. If your meter has got a switch or a selector button on it which says PEP, be careful because it probably isn't reading PEP. Very, very few VSWR power meters will read PEP unless they've got an external power supply going to them with a, with a special circuit inside to actually measure PEP. Generally speaking, your VSWR meter, when you switch to average or PEP, will actually read about half the actual power going out. And you can prove that quite easily, really. If you switch your transceiver to, say you set your power up to I don't know, 25 watts on your transceiver, and you speak into the microphone and you see a power indication of 12, 14 watts, something like that, which you probably will do. If you then switch to FM, which will produce a full blown carrier at your 25 watts, you should see the VSWR meter reading 25 watts. Now it's not that when you transmit speech, when you transmit with SSB, you've got less power coming out. It's just the fact that that meter is reading the average power. It can't possibly measure those instant peaks. It hasn't got the, it, the inertia is not there to read those instant peaks. Sometimes LED meters are better. Sometimes an LED meter will have a hang on it, a hang circuit on it, where the LED on the far right, in other words, the LED that's measured at the highest power will actually stay on for a little bit. Um, some of the Ellicraft um, uh, units use that. So I think the LED, uh, the uh, Ellicraft VSWR, VSWR meter has that feature. And it means to say that you can get fairly close to PEP, but generally speaking, most VSWR meters with the average circuits switched in will read about half the PEP power. Another reason for having the external VSWR meter is if something happens on the antenna, the antenna is actually drifting a bit. Um, maybe uh, when it rains or when you get a frost or you get ice on it, the actual antenna VSWR will possibly rise. Now, if you're in a habit of just pressing your antenna tuner on the internal transceiver to get a good VSWR, you'll probably get a good VSWR. But if you've got an external meter, you might notice that your old 1.7 VSWR you were getting has gone up to 2.5, 2.5 to 1. Now, if you are in the habit of just pressing the uh, tuner button on the transceiver and you didn't have an external meter, you wouldn't know about that you wouldn't know that the, the VSWR has drifted up a bit. So another reason for having an external VSWR power meter. So what happens if you connect up a linear amplifier? Well, what you must do is you must then move your VSWR power meter to the output of the linear amplifier, making sure, of course, that your power meter will actually handle that power because a lot of VSWR meters are only rated at say 100 or 200 watts so if you're going to put a linear amplifier in circuit make sure that your VSWR meter will handle the power. So you connect your linear amplifier up to your transceiver and then the output of the transceiver feeds into the VSWR power meter and then the power meter travel the output of the power meter travels through your line isolator don't forget the line isolator 
and then the power runs up to the uh, antenna. So going backwards, you've got antenna, line isolator, VSWR power meter, linear amplifier. Now, if the linear amplifier is in bypass mode, the VSWR power meter is still reading the, the true VSWR on the, on the line. And of course, if it's in, in operation, likewise. So that's the setup you need to employ when you have a linear amplifier in circuit. And perhaps I can end this with a rather uh, funny story. This actually happened to me. Um, we set up a contest station uh, in Hockley at our old premises quite a few years ago now. Uh, and it was a CW contest and the local CW group came down and we set up a couple of Ellicraft transceivers and we had a couple of amplifiers and we had quite an elaborate antenna system there with a, with a, a 60 foot tower in the car park and so forth. And we were ready to go. The frustrating thing was that one of the amplifiers had developed a fault in as much as it would only give about uh, 80 or 90 watts out. Everything looked okay. Um, the, the, the current drawn by the amplifier looked okay, etc, etc, but we couldn't get the full power of that amplifier out by any means. It was say, about 50, 60, 70 watts. And we turned the power, turned the drive level up, but we just couldn't get it. So anyway, we decided to press ahead um, with the contest. Uh, the other station was okay, of course, and it, it, everything was work, working okay. And uh, we had a break. Um, for I don't know, somebody was in a, a, a break and they had a cup of coffee and so forth, and I thought, I wonder what's wrong with this, and I suddenly found out what was wrong. I, me, had connected the VSWR power meter around the wrong way, and what we were reading was the return power. The actual amplifier was pumping out well in excess of what it should have been doing. <laughs> No wonder they were doing so well with such low power. So another lesson is make sure you get your VSWR power meter around the right way and not what I did. And I was I thought I was reading the output power of the transceiver. I was reading the reflective power. There we are. So I hope this video has given you some ideas um, of how to use a VSWR meter. Um, things that you need to pay attention to in order to get things correct. And the reason indeed for buying a VSWR power meter. As usual, thank you for watching this video. Much appreciated your support on this channel. You take care, enjoy home radio, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.